space. The deep vastness of it humbles us as to our insignificance. It may scare us, inspire us, or cause us to wonder. To one, it may be a testament of God's depth and power. To another, its importance may be its role as a future home. Despite our varied perceptions, one thing is certain. Much of space remains a mystery. On July 20th, 1969, we landed on the moon. As so many believed back then, you'd think we'd have reached Mars by the end of the century. But we pulled inward and are forced to ask ourselves, why? Was it a lack of ambition, a failure of nerve? Our dreams faded with the century. Today, our Mars budget is being obliterated and wiped off the map. As Neil Tyson says, right now, NASA's Mars ambitions are delayed until the 2030s, on funding not yet allocated, overseen by a Congress and a president yet to be named. Right now, we're not going to Mars. NASA doesn't even have plans to go back to the moon. What happened? Our message to you, Mr. President, is that exploration of this vast unknown shouldn't be something scientists just do for fun. Space exploration benefits the integrity of the United States as an economic and innovative nation. Our challenge to you is to promote space exploration in NASA as a priority in the federal budget. Because funding NASA means inspiring the next generation of mathematicians and scientists and stimulates the economy by entitling this workforce to an atmosphere of innovation. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. If Kennedy said, we will go to the moon uh, sometime before the century ends. <laughs> What is it? What is that? It's not ambition. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills. Everybody goes around and they say, oh, do we need more science teachers? We need more kids interested in science. Oh, we have jobs going overseas. And how do we increase science literacy? And I assert that that problem is an absence of ambition of the nation because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept, one we are unwilling to postpone, and one we intend to win. For NASA to say, we still have ambitions, we're going to Mars in 25 years. No, I'm sorry, that's not ambition. Mr. President, we've got symptoms of a nation with a lack of ambition. Unemployment rates are up, our nation is going broke, our jobs are going overseas, and our nation is swimming in debt. In the federal budget, we spend money on programs or other solutions that we think will solve our problems. However, this federal budget spending can sometimes be seen as a waste because it serves to treat the symptoms of our nation's problems, but fails to cure the deeper illness that is infecting our nation. As Mr. Tyson put it, some federal budget spending can be seen as little band-aids. Band-aids are superficial relief, failing to address the deeper issue of this nation, which is a general lack of ambition. See, Apollo conveyed a confidence, energy, and breadth of vision that did capture the imagination of the world. It inspired an optimism about technology and an enthusiasm for the future. You didn't need government to tell people that doing science was good. The ambition was self-evident. I was in high school when Sputnik went up. 1957, and there was a profound change in the United States regarding the support of science and technology back then uh, because of that event. In the school system and in the culture of society, what drives ambitions? There's nothing that drives ambitions the way NASA does. And today's NASA portfolio taps biologists because we're looking for Mar life on Mars, and it's chemists and physicists and electrical engineers, mechanical engineers. As Carl Sagan put it, the discoveries of NASA, quote, propagates through the society, bounces off walls and comes back at us. It increases a general sense of optimism. When we dream big in NASA, it inspires a nation. School children dream, engineers innovate, Biologists scramble to understand, and physicists begin to ask, what if? It stimulates that deeper engine, 
It stimulates an attitude of ambition that could solve many symptoms of our weakened economy. Make our ambitions in space so tasty, so seductive, so, so enticing that people will be beating down the door to get into the science classroom. Many people would agree that NASA has a lot to offer. However, the biggest argument against increased funding for space exploration is that we don't have the budget to dream big in NASA right now. And, and at the end of the day, the thing is, manned space flight, kind of awesome, kind of wish I could be part of it, but there isn't the budget in the world right now to do it right. So let's look at the facts. Last year, the federal budget was three and a half trillion dollars. Currently, NASA's portion of the budget is 0.5%, or only half a penny on the tax dollar. Mr. President, NASA drives the ambitions of this nation. It inspires a new generation of mathematicians and scientists. NASA is that deeper engine. But currently, the federal budget allocates 50 times as much money for social programs and education than it does for NASA. It's not that we can't afford to support NASA. We've chosen not to afford it. You can choose to spend those three trillion tax dollars as you deem necessary by funding ideas and programs that you deem essential in stimulating and sustaining this great nation. This interest that gets created by exploration going beyond the Earth, creating exciting scientific results, I mean, that, that, that interest starts to wane. Less people getting interested in science, fewer people going down that path, and you're starting to cause problems with future technological developments in the country if you cut too deeply in that arena. You need, you need to spur technological developments in a variety of ways. Because astronomy, I feel like, is a gateway science to get people into science, or to get people into math and science. I feel like space exploration and astronomy uh, are good avenues to get people interested in science. See, but it's not just about inspiring the next generation. NASA is about entitling this workforce to an atmosphere of dynamic and revolutionary innovation. Your ambitions in space are the precedent for what else goes on in this society. As Mr. Tyson put it, quote, one no longer has the luxury to think of science just as something scientists do for fun. We need to recognize science as something which separates nations that advance in their culture and their economy and nations that recede, close quote. Therefore, the extent to which we cut funding in our scientific future is also the extent to which we diminish our ability to compete economically. Surely the opening vistas of space promise high cost and hardships, as well as high reward. So it is not surprising that some would have us stay where we are a little longer, to rest, to wait. But this country of the United States was not built by those who waited and rested and wished to look behind them. NASA as a priority in the federal budget would reinvigorate this nation's ambition like no other force can. Make it a priority and we'll talk about where NASA is going in the next 10 years, not the next 30 or the next 50. Make it a priority and we'll talk about where this nation's economy is going in the next 10 years. Otherwise, yeah, just bring a big box of Band-Aids. And keep at it because you'll be doing it forever. As Mr. Tyson put it, how much would you pay to launch our economy? <laughs>